You're listening to Empire of Rust, the world's first and only Transformers RPG podcast. Join the fight as Carapace, Rex, Magna, Wildstrike, and Sweet Spot fight their way through Iacon's underworld against criminal empires and a movement determined to bring an end to the Cybertronian Confederation. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 41 of Empire of Rust. Today, I want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone, and thank you to everyone who listens, who comments, and who supports us. And a big shout-out to Sledge, Solo, and Stupid Monkey on our Discord channel. You three are always around, leaving positive comments about the show, asking about alt modes, and just in general being awesome people. And definitely another big shout-out to Robinus Prime for all these super excited Twitter messages. The title of EOR Evangelist goes to you. If you want to interact with us and maybe get a shout-out for yourself, go ahead and leave us a message on our Discord channel or comment and review on the podcast app of choice. Once again, thank you all so much for your support. Now, let's get into episode 41. What we have here is a failure to separate. I'm just imagining like if there was a a kitten or a dog or something like around the the Enigma when you guys said uh, all combined. (laughs) (laughs) I guess that would be considered a full (laughs) conversion Borg. (laughs) You'd have a cat's like a cat's thoughts in your head. Meow, 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 meow. I know, a superiority complex and dismissiveness of every single thing else around me. I think we already got that. Well, you do get sweet spot. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, well, what else am I supposed to think about while I'm talking and walking as fast as the rest of you? It's like I'm napping. I really, it would be fun just to kind of delve into just how alien this would feel. Like, like I know that you know, between this group, we could probably come up with three hours of just what the fuckness, you know, <laughs> about dealing with being a combiner. Don't we normally <laughs> lock us into a group chat for uh, for three hours without yeah, any no. topic to go on? And yeah, oh my god, it'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> Part of me really wants that know. to happen. No one knowing us, we'd end up on the, we end up making waffles on the moon or something like that. You know? <laughs> We're not that focused. But where would we get the syrup? You don't have three hours to do this. We only got one yeah, hour. Right. That's- Besides, you're putting the cart before the horse. You got to be able to make the waffles on the moon first. So segue, segue. Take Mike. Take control. Take control. Tell us to shut up. Yeah, it's not going to happen otherwise. No, you can just mute us all. Can I? Sure. <laughs> oh my god, I can. <laughs> It'd be an awful boring podcast. <laughs> it's now the mic show. <laughs> Shit, wrong mic. <laughs> <laughs> so you are standing in the basement of the Iacon Diplomatic Hub, but we're going to move away from that for a moment. In the restored Metalhawk Landing, shoppers travel from stall to stall, meeting friends and catching up on the latest news. Overlooking the plaza is an enormous vid screen rebroadcasting a speech from Delegate Windblade from the previous cycle. She and an increasing number of colonists have been calling for new elections since Cybertron first worked their way into power. She is interrupted mid-speech by Minister Zaron as he breaks into the newsfeed. Attention citizens, be advised of a citywide security alert for a rogue combiner. This bot has rampaged through the headquarters of the Iacon Security Services. The combiner is made up of a group of former security officers from off-world that have attempted to steal vital equipment, extinguishing the sparks of over a dozen guards while making their escape. You're advised to not approach this bot as it is considered extremely dangerous. Even being in its presence could cause system shutdown and stasis lock. Security forces are currently dealing with the threat. Stay at your location and do not leave unless you are under imminent attack. Cybertron First will protect you from this and all external threats. 
panicked shouts erupt from the streets as bots from all walks of life and all functions run to seek cover from the unknown threat. Meanwhile, in the basement of the Iacon diplomatic hub, that same combiner is having some trouble letting go. I did my part. I, I let go. I unhinged my fingers as they are locked in up, up here and they were loose and wiggling, but somebody just doesn't want this to end. So we weren't privy to that, I'm assuming. Correct. I so want to kill that guy. So he just publicly announced Cybertron first. No, they did that last time. Yeah, before we came back. Yeah, Cybertron first is in, is in power right now. Yeah, they kind of took over. Okay. But they just made us public enemy number one. Is there like a, a, a way to uh, torture sparks? Like, is there like a spark rack? Yeah, there are devices like that. Oh, because I, I think we might need to find one. For, for Zaron, of course. This, of course, assumes that Zaron is in his right mind. I haven't gotten that far. You guys have found a lot of uh, evidence so far that the, the leadership and the security forces of Iacon have all been taken over. So, who knows who is actually acting of their own accord. Did we ever find out the name of the, the bot that's making the little mind control things? I don't know if you ever tried to figure it out. I don't think that you did. Because I know he's, like, first among many, but I don't know if there was an actual, like, all oh, right, that's Joe down at the tackle shop, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, I don't even think you know if uh, Quick Switch himself is actually a villain. Maybe he's the one being controlled. We need to figure out a way to, one, disable these things without killing the folks, like some sort of EMP, and yeah. who's in charge and ending the source. Yeah, that all sounds like a real good plan. Does it? Does he think there's any way to get to uh, what's his face, the uh, scientist guy, Wheeljack? Wheeljack, yeah. Anyone could make something like that. He could. Uh, we were trying to make some inroads to uh, to contact him. You did, yeah. You managed to actually get to him, and you uh, you talked to him. Remember that, uh, Magnum? You found a scratch on the on the desk, the uh, the data pad to the stars. Oh yes, that that little. Ha! <laughs> scratch pad. <laughs> I just he got was that. almost scratched out. <laughs> yep. I recall liking that thing. Yeah, <laughs> because it gave attitude right away. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Nearly overpowered Magnum, too. Until <laughs> Magnum shoved the gun in his face. <laughs> <laughs> that that was awesome. Hey, Magnum, remember when he did that to you? <laughs> oh, good times, good times. <laughs> Why are you reaching for your I weapon? No, I have no such recollection. You guys are out of your minds. I think this is great now, but I really think we should break up. Uh, yes, I agree and concur and all of that, except I don't want to. I don't want to be part of this collective anymore. That's, that's what I, I think I just... he's saying. It's not him, it's you. <laughs> I agree with the thought, but I feel like I'm compelled to agree with the thought. <laughs> okay, let's, let, let's not be together on three. Okay. Everyone in on this? Wild strike. Yep. Okay, and uh, Legionnaire and uh, 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 Ar Arctic. Arctic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Magnum, uh, you you kind of saw them as they. Uh, it looked like they were trying to disconnect, but it, it, they just didn't get that far. Uh, if you want to aid them, you can aid them with uh, mysticism. Amateurs. <laughs> or. Or just pull. <laughs> Let me teach you how to fall apart. I know a thing or two about falling apart. Uh, we need to do it uh, physically, not emotionally. <laughs> well, fuck you. Hey, I lose my head every day. That's true, he does. I've seen it happen. <laughs> More than once. You can say what you want about Magnum, but he does have a good head on his shoulders. I mean, it's his best part. It really is. Yep. <laughs> he does all his thinking with it. Uh-oh. Well, I was supposed to be helping you here. I, I don't remember that. <laughs> Good luck fitting through the door. Hey, Carapace, jog his memory. I got a 22 on the mysticism. And uh, would Alloy roll mysticism as well, please? Uh, what is our mysticism right now? I'm betting it's pretty low. <laughs> Plus three. <laughs> I think this is the first mysticism roll we've had the entire game. The second, yeah. actually, Magnum. You had the first. Congratulations. First. Yay. Technically the third, because you failed the, the one at the end of last episode. All right, all right. 
Now you're just splitting hairs. Didn't we use mysticism to try to identify the spark eater, too? Mm, I don't know. Not, not important. 22. So with Rumi's a plus four, we get a 26. Yeah. This time, you start disconnecting. You feel all of the, the bits and bolts starting to, to disconnect. You start to see uh, gaps forming between the, uh, the arms and the legs as it looks like everything is about to start to separate. And then just as it looks like it's going to succeed, it succeeds. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, like, there's no we, way we can't do any better. I was so ready to, to call plot. Yeah. <laughs> nope. You managed to disconnect and all of you land on the, the floor standing up and all of the... Uh, I don't think you guys took any damage, but if you did, it's uh, uh, your hit points are going to be distributed to all of you. But I think you are. I think you're fine. I was actually low. Oh well, now you're full. You know what? I, I just had the, um, a vision of like what it looks like to try to disassemble incorrectly. Like remember at the end when Unicron just like kind of pulls off his own leg in the movie. Yep. You know, it's just yep. like oh, like and light comes out. You're like no, oh, I was trying to just ah, whatever. Okay, legs disconnected. <laughs> now what? Is that just hit points or stamina and hit points? Uh, stamina and hit points, you are full up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Lovely. That's the the good thing about our combination. Okay, we should probably get going. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely. want to get going. Where are we going? Uh, Over here, this way. Exit up. stage right. Do you, we have a location in mind? Do we like Wheeljack enough to not make him complicit in what we're doing? Like, should we avoid him because we like him, or should we go there and put him in trouble? Well, we sort of need him. I yeah. Mean, what did what did we ask him to do last time we talked to him? Remind me. Here's here's kind of the story as as it stands now. So, Quick Switch wanted you to to get the Enigma of Combination from the vaults down here in the ISS building. You got it. <laughs> but yeah, some. something went wrong, certainly. Now, you found out in the middle of that whole trip that Quickswitch was the, or is the, the leader of Cybertron first. You found that out from Wildstrike. And any number of the ministers and the leadership of Cybertron could be infected or, or being controlled by these little... Um, these little bug-like devices that you see on the backs of uh, a lot of the the necks of the security officers and you know and, and other people that you've you've encountered here. When you went to visit Wheeljack after uh, Quick Switch gave you your mission, uh, you went to his place to find out just where in the building you need to go and if there was any access codes or anything that you could use to get to get into it and since wheeljack helped to actually create the the vaults and to get everything kind of set up he was able to get you a uh, uh kind of an override code for the doors for the cells for the vaults and get you in and you know get you in pretty easily uh he didn't ask you to, to really do anything while there because he knew that you needed to get into there and you didn't really mention what you were going to do once you get in there. He, you just asked, hey, I just, we just need to get in there. So he helped you out there. Uh, so right now, you have the Enigma. Uh, Quicks, as, as far as Quick Switch knows, you're going to be going in and getting it for him. And yeah, that's it. Quick Switch doesn't even know that you guys found uh, Wild Strike in there. And, yeah. Did we approach him first about getting in here to uh, get Wildstrike out? Uh, or did he approach us first about getting in here to get the Enigma out? He approached you first about getting the Enigma out. Because he has told you that Cybertron first is in charge of everything. And he doesn't want a powerful artifact like the Enigma of Combination uh, just sitting in the vaults where they could have access to it. You found out that Wildstrike was here because he managed to get a signal out to you. So it was serendipitous. We need to get to Wheeljack and bring him some of these dead bugs and then see what he can make from it. Oh, yes. Did we find out how to mm -hmm. identify who was under their control besides uh, just looking at their necks physically? The behavior's a little um, stiff. 
I, I thought that um, Pythagoras was going to try to figure it out. Since we have one of the things now, you can like rig some sort of scanner to detect for them. But I don't know if we actually, I don't think we actually got to that. Yeah, we didn't have time. We didn't have time. Yeah. We were I figured that's a, once we're in Wheeljack's laboratory, then we can do weird, cool stuff like that. Cool. All right. So speaking of uh, not having time, how about we uh, get on out this door here? Agreed. Okay, to wheel checks. I do a quick check to make sure that all of my weapons and bits are in the parts where they're supposed to be. What, you think I kept something? I'm <laughs> counting my fingers, dude. It's because I'm a politician, right? Is that it? Can't trust this? Well, I guess you were in my mind for about ten seconds, and now you know how I think. I do, and I'm <laughs> deeply offended. And I think you know that. So this conversation is over. Let's move it's on. Like, you'd also know I don't care. <laughs> Which is why I'm ending the conversation. There's no point talking to you about it. You guys have only gotten more charming, I'll tell you that. So what are you guys going to do about the four four other bots that are with you? So Legionnaire in Arctic, of course, Barricade, and that uh, the one guard that you managed to pull the device off of. Well, we don't know about the the horrible thing that was just happening. So I think that based on what we know, we should expect that they're going to be looking for us and that we should get out and get into hiding as fast as possible. Suggesting that they come with us, but they have free will, so... Yep, definitely. It's their choice. Come with us, or don't. Yeah, I mean, there were prisoners here, weren't they? Uh, they were? Yeah, a few of them were, and the... Uh, um, Actually, the, the guard could probably get the others out by acting as if they were captured. Mm. If it comes down to it, yeah. He's no longer un- under control, but he could certainly act like it. I-, I think. I don't know. Maybe you didn't study, you know, theater in your younger bot days. I mean, why don't we ask them? What do they want to do? Do they want to stay or do they want to go? Barricade and Arctic will accompany you. Both of them are security service personnel. And have kind of seen what's going on here, and they they realize what's you know what's up. They realize that the the security services building has been compromised, and it's no longer safe for them to stay in it. If they did, then it's very likely they will get caught again. Uh, the guard is less convinced, but it looks like he's going to at least follow along for now. Uh, you imagine that he is he's he's still kind of like a little bit confused. Because he just had the the device pulled off of him and saw like a saw you guys kill a bunch of his friends, so he doesn't remember being dominated. He doesn't have any recollection of anything that's happened in the past. Oh, I want to say like twenty cycles, uh, almost the space of a month. Hmm. Okay, so that's important knowledge that we didn't know that the people that are dominated are. Like, did he know anything? Like, was he like just like asleep? He'll tell you that he's got some, like, vague recollections of, like, going places and receiving orders, but it, it's like he's just been in a daze. Like, it's like his entire life has just been a, a haze. If he thinks about it very carefully, he can pick out some, like, some things, some, some memories, but it takes a, a good deal of concentration, and, and it, it's not coming easily to him. Well, if that's the case, then I would definitely suggest that he come along with us, because it's possible... Although, I don't know how likely that uh, Wheeljack will be able to find some way to probe his memory uh, or aid him in bringing it to the, to the front of his mind so he can recall some details to help our investigation. But if, anyway, he, if, he, if he isn't going to end up on our side because of said friend murder, bringing him to Wheeljack means either we have to kill him later or imprison him or... I, I didn't say make him come. I'm strongly well, I, I suggesting. Yep. It is... Uh, his option, and uh, I want to make that clear. It's his choice. We didn't want to kill anybody. Well, most of us didn't. I'm looking at you. I recall you being the uh, the bit of trigger finger one last time. Uh, that is true. I, I did give in to some impulses, <laughs> but I do not recognize those impulses as solely being my own. Okay. Well, that's a nice morality dodge. Well, <laughs> apparently, uh, Sweetspot has discovered the ultimate the ultimate form of uh, non accountability. Yeah, <laughs> I was a combiner at the time. I gave myself <laughs> plausible deniability or implausible. How about you, Magnum? You were accused of uh, of stealing an artifact when you were not in your right mind or didn't have your right head on. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sure you don't. 
What were, what were we talking about? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. We were busy here not escaping. So Barricade and Ar- Arctic are coming with us. What about Legionnaire? How did he feel being an arm or a leg? Legionnaire wants to, to go back to Zaron. He was a, or is, a bodyguard for Zaron, and he feels that that is his place, that's where he should be. Even if Zaron is a fascist, mind-controlling dictator? No, well, Legionnaire doesn't really know that. Telling him what we know of the buggy things, just in case he uh, didn't know or wasn't fully aware. If you go back to your post without this little thingy here uh, on your neck, uh, those that put it there are likely going to attempt to put another one there. Or maybe just kill you outright. You are in danger if you go back to your old life, I believe. Was he bugged when we found him? He was not. He was in a cell. Oh, Legionnaire was? He was. So maybe we ask him how he got there in the first place. Oh. I would ask him to come with us, and we can ask him later instead of in the basement of the building, because we need to get yeah, going. that's probably great. Wild strike, always pragmatic. <laughs> <laughs> Make a, uh, a quick diplomacy check, whoever wants to try and convince him to come with you. Should I stay or should I go? 18. It's plus two for you, Adam. All right, so that's going to be a 23. Yeah, I think you can convince him. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll come with you for now, but I better get an explanation of what's going on. I got little bits and pieces of your your memories kind of floating around in my head. Okay. These little bug things. All right. The bit with the melon is especially disturbing. Well, well, that's actually a good thing, because now you can discern that when we tell you something about these things, you know that we're telling the truth, because you know what was in our mind. Am I right? I'm right. Okay. Doors this way. Let's go. I, I, I do. I, oh, oh, all right then. Yes. Let's, <laughs> let's move on. Walk and talk. Walk and talk. All right, well, maybe we should just give them, fill them in fully as we go. Okay. Let me ask then two questions. One, who is carrying the Enigma of Combination? I have it right now. Magnum has it. Unless someone thinks that some, they should hang on to it better. better. Uh, I don't want to touch that thing. No, you can hold on to it. I mean, does okay. does anybody do any of us have any like internal like compartments? Actually, would it be safer for us to carry it because we've already been kind of touched by it and turned into a combiner? Would that like make us immune to its effect? I don't think anyone on the planet would know that. Okay, then I would suggest that be the case because Magnum is not a combiner as of yet. But uh, I, I pay the fools that do get combined with them. So uh, <laughs> hey. so let's just hold on to that for you. I resemble that remark. Yep, hitting all four corners. And I can carry it if necessary. I don't have any internal compartments, but I have a high carry capacity, so. I have cargo storage. Yeah, actually, uh, Wild Strike, how about if you I have hold- lots of cargo capacity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wild Strike, why don't you hold on to the... Matrix, and give me the other thing that I had you holding on to before that uh, green spot there. And Carapace, you can you can hold on to this. What's what's <coughs> this? This is the green spark that we have recovered here. Oh, that thing that I found on the yeah the, the yeah underground yeah okay it smells weird. Weirder than last time. <laughs> yeah, I believe that was way back in episode. Five or six? <laughs> Damn. It smells older. Okay. I don't know I don't know what that means either. Alright, onward. <laughs> Alright, just the to... Yeah, I will uh, store the Enigma. Alright, so Wildstrike, you are carrying that. That's the first question. And second question is how are you guys going to be uh, like heading out on this? Are you just going to march straight out? Are you going to have the, the guard kind of pretend that he's arresting some of you? Are you going to help him with that? How are you, uh, you going to do this? Remember that you are in the, the basement of the Iacon Diplomatic Hub. It's a building right next to the security services building. Uh, so you know that there are diplomatic offices above you, and each of the colony's worlds are going to have uh, like offices and just kind of space for, for, the, the, for diplomats. Uh, sweet spot. I'm sure you've been in this building at some point before, but oh, yeah. you don't 
you don't work here. Uh, would there be an office or a floor uh, that is designated as uh, the Velocitronian Embassy? I'm sure there would be, yeah, probably and, up on the second or third floor. And would that be considered an embassy as such a uh, you know, sovereign ground for Velocitronians? This building specifically, no. This is not a, a true embassy, so it, it's not considered uh, like Velocitronian soil. This is essentially uh, like the equivalent of a federal building. Uh, also, consider the fact that our enemy is using mind control. I don't think sovereignty is going to be a, an issue for them. I know, but the, uh, the image projected has to be maintained by both those seeking to maintain control and those wishing to actually have it. Um, how many people can you hold in your new form? Uh, I can go huge, I think. Yeah, Mass Shift 2 gets me to huge. I think that gives me uh, uh, nine spaces. So could we just get to the roof and you turn into that? I don't think your new form is known by anybody. True, true that. And most of us are probably not known in this building uh, anyway by those that normally uh, might or might not know us. We might be able to take this stairway straight to the the roof. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, that would be nice and easy. Just act like we're supposed to be here. Exactly. Let's go press our luck. I'll go first so that when we reach the uh, top, I can just transform and we can load up. All right. All right, sounds good. Uh, Give me a bluff check from each of you. Each of us? Ooh, Mm -hmm. lucky roll. Let's start off with Sweet Spot. What'd you get? I got a 30. Wink, wink. No, it's just a 10. All right. That's still a pass. Carapace, <laughs> what about you? Um, I rolled a 19, so that means I got a 19. All right. That's a pass. Wild Strike, how about you? 17. 17. Pass. And last but not least, Magnum. 29. 29. All right. Oh, good. The DC on that was pretty low because no one in the building is looking for you in terms of uh, uh, trying to arrest you or anything. So all of you came through that with flying colors. Okay. So, yeah, you head up the the building uh, up to the roof access. And, yeah, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of you are now on the roof. I shall look around real quick and then transform into the uh, transport at the largest size I can manage and muster. Open up the doors and say, welcome aboard, gents and lady. Well, that's new. Wild Strike? Yes. Are you uh, Are you okay with uh, coming aboard? Yeah. I think in the uh, interest of the situation, that would be fine. Is there a reason why you wouldn't? Because he's a jet. Oh, <laughs> and, right, and okay. he might want to uh, <laughs> fly as escort, but uh, I agree that uh, his jet form is known where mine is not. So this is a, like an interesting – you just said like, wow, that's new. Like, I mean, how often must that happen? Like where you're just kind of like, all oh, right, you can transform into a new thing and you just got 900 times bigger. Like, you know, like <laughs> – it's both miraculous and common. Like, it's a weird... It's yeah. like a sunset. Like, you know, you're like, wow, every single night, it's amazing. And eh, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, that's a new shirt. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Does this shirt make me look big? <laughs> uh, thanks, I got this for my tug. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the shirt. Do you have ashtrays? Um... No, I do not. All right, I'll find some. I, I do have a non uh, no smoking sign, though. I'll light it oh, up for you. I can, <laughs> I can turn it over and put, uh, put my cigarettes on. <laughs> yeah, this must be a, a really crazy time for uh, for Wild Strike, because th- this is comple- 100% new to you. And the, the, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the last time you saw Sweet Spot, he was just, I mean, he, he, he turned into a car, barely. Hey. <laughs> oh. 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 Wow. I didn't know it was possible for a transformer to fail transforming. Yeah. <laughs> it was only that once. Well, he'd lie down and 
he would lie down and hold on a few a few wheels and go vroom vroom and everyone just sort of went with it. We didn't want to hurt his feelings. Good. Very good. So yeah, how is how is Wild Strike coping with all this? Because not not only was he imprisoned for who knows how long, he got shoved into a combiner, presumably against his will. <laughs> yes. And and now here's Sweet Spot turning into a a jet, and he, here here he is is going to carry everyone. You know, the way this day is going, nothing's going to surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> he's rethinking about whether he's happy to be part, part, of, part of the party again. You know what? I'm going to take that bit. <laughs> uh, I'll have to process this later. <laughs> Ten Shannick says right. that you're wrong. Everybody aboard, Palookas. Come on. All right. So you guys all get on board Sweet Spots. The door closes. Her engines sp- uh, spin up, and you... Lift off from the Iacon Diplomatic Hub, having successfully escaped from the vaults. Oh my gosh, I've never felt right. so full. Ooh. How, how fast can you go? Uh, not that fast right now. I, I think I need an antacid or a, uh, a, fuel, <laughs> a fuel additive or something. Magnum, can you turn into a sensor bay to make sure that we're not being tracked? In me? He can turn into a smaller one. He turned into a freaking dollhouse before, remember? Okay. As long as he still works the same way. I suppose that's all right. Certainly. Um, yeah, I guess I'll tr- change into a uh, sensor bay and do some scans around us. Uh, I think if we're going to go see Wheeljack, we need to f- figure out where to go and then s- obviously not fly directly to his office. Agreed. Somewhere we can land. We should probably contact him as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Signals could be monitors. Yeah, I'm sure Magnum can send an encrypted signal, though. And I'm sure oh, Wheeljack sure. could decrypt it. Okay, Magnum, so yeah, you uh, you go ahead and you transform, and I imagine you uh, connect up your sensors to Sweet Spot's uh, console and and essentially feed your sensors through him, because otherwise you will be trying to sense things through the, the walls of Sweet Spot, which uh, probably wouldn't end too well. I sense a room. So you keep an eye on everything as Sweet Spot is flying through the, the Cybertronian skies, and it looks like you managed to to get away as uh, as cleanly as possible it doesn't look like anyone is following you uh however you do as you are as you're scanning around you do pick up the uh the transmission from uh from minister zaron the one that i had uh, i'd said earlier and i'm sure that you relay that information to all of your companions as well yep i will play it for them Looks like you guys are most wanted now. Well, fortunately, they're looking for one big guy and not looking for me as a ship. How is our um, former Zaron bodyguard reacting to this? Is he like, oh, oh shit? Yeah. Someone want to read his uh, facial expressions? Although they they are surely stoic. Uh, if you actually take a look at his token, he doesn't have a face. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the GM thought of everything. <laughs> he had his face removed in the war. 22 for sense motive. He looks kind of surprised. Like, this This doesn't track with how Zaron generally behaves. And as he's watching the this transmission, uh, he'll, he'll come on and say, it's like this... Zaron's not acting like he usually does. Do you think whoever did this with the, the, the bugs, you think he he got hit by this? You think someone's controlling him? It's possible. Could very well be. I mean, we know Iron Eye's behaving here weird, too, so... I mean, he not, may not be in his right mind. I don't think so. Yeah, this is your captain speaking. If you look over to the left side of the cabin, you will see the disappointment on this young boss face because uh, they probably could not pull anything off unless they had taken control of some of the upper management aspects of the government, and that would include your boss. Can you see inside yourself? 
No, nope, but I feel you moving around. <laughs> like, does that make you queasy? Like, you know, like how does that work? Uh, only if you ask me if there's a bomb in me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Carapace, are you going to ask the ship if it's alive? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm aware. <laughs> You should just shoot him, just to make sure. Yeah, just to make sure. Just, no. <laughs> no, you don't need to make sure. You know what? Sometimes I, it's good to be vague. How do I know it's the real sweet spot? <laughs> You're an ass. Oh, actually, you started crying before I even hit you. Okay, it's you. <laughs> oh. Oh. Not the leather seats, please. Zaron is... Zaron's a peacemaker. He always has been. He's... He, he, he never is. He would never uh, use words like this. He would never just call out a, a a bot as a threat, even if he should. He's always trying to to broker a, a peace deal. He's always trying to to find the the good on both sides. It's one of the things I admire most and least about him. Wild Strike would step up to a legionnaire. Say, from what I've seen of the guards that have the bug device on them. They're not themselves. They don't have much of a personality. They're more like drones, just following orders. Zaron is completely different. He's in charge. He set me up. He attacked me. He threw me in the prison. All on his own authority. Nobody else's. I'm sorry to say he's in charge of C1. What, what? That was a little jolted at certain places. Is Are you acting okay? We already checked you, though, right? Yes. Okay, I thought so. So you're, you believe that Zaron is the head of, C, of, of C1? Yeah, without a doubt. Do you think he's the origin of these mind control bugs? He may not be the origin, but he has something to do with them. Okay. Mm. This doesn't this Is ever, doesn't make any sense to me. He's he would never act like this. He he just he he wouldn't. He, uh, I I don't I don't know. He didn't lift a finger when I was thrown in jail. Why wouldn't he? Because he's a, a peacemaker. That's what he's always been. Why were, why were you thrown in jail? I don't know why. A pair of security officers uh, came, to, came to Zaron's office when he was out and arrested me. They didn't give a reason for it. They didn't say that I committed a crime. They simply said, they simply told me to come down to the station, and then they brought me down to the vaults and put me in the cell. Weren't you his bodyguard? As far as I know, I still am. If you were out, shouldn't you have been with him? What's wrong with you? He told me, he ordered me specifically to stay behind this one time. And then he got rid of you. And now you know why. He had never ordered me to stay behind before. I was always right there with him. Yeah, that's very suspicious. Perhaps there's a reason why you couldn't be controlled with these devices. Ooh, that would be interesting. And maybe to find he, out. yeah, maybe he knew he couldn't do that, so he locked you away. Could also All be right. that he actually cared about the guy, and he he wanted to spare him the you know that situation. I don't know. I do well, that. I, I know, but I'm, I'm hypothesizing. It's possible that once he took control, he'd come back to free him. And then he'd get your loyalty without having to see what he actually did. Well, I'm going to uh, put the fasten seatbelt signs on uh, because we're coming up to a spot where I think I can land. It's not too far from uh, Wheel Jacks. So Have you ever on. landed before? Uh, yes. Once. If you need some advice, I can no. help. <laughs> everyone, everyone, shut your mouth. Tell me you didn't learn it from Wild Strike, yeah. I learned it from watching you. <laughs> no, it's gonna ease it into the building there. <laughs> All right, nose uh, first or nothing, baby. This nose down about uh, ninety degrees. <laughs> and full throttle. Full throttle. <laughs> and oh, the ground's coming up real fast. <laughs> I'm used to traveling this fast, but not in this direction. 
Don't worry, you'll stop when you get there. <laughs> Fly? Yes. Up. Land? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I would also like to take Carapace aside and, you know, whisper to him, if we we can't let Legionnaire go back to Zaron, if it comes to that, we need to take him out. I totally agree. Um, obviously, I believe that it's likely the others are going to want to, imp- you know, keep him alive. So we'll probably, from, you know, have some sort of way of imprisoning him. But I agree. Yeah, the, you don't, you don't, you don't need to twist my turbines in order to. <laughs> I, I figured you would, uh, you'd be able to help with that. Yeah. If it came to that. Of course. Oh, that was a little hotter than expected. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. I'll open up the door. Everybody up. You're like half Should... on the roof, half off. <laughs> Should we contact Real Jack first? Yeah, let's, let me try to um, open a secure line to him. Well, let's get out of sight. Let's get into the building so we can't be seen from the sky. What are we on top of? It's a, It's like a two-story building. Maybe a block or two further out from uh, Wheeljack's more like, more like two blocks, yeah. So if we get out of sight, try to connect with them and uh, try to prevent eavesdrop, eavesdropping, that sort of thing. Let's use some countermeasures. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you uh, you send your signal off and it looks like it's connecting with, uh, with Wheeljack. Yeah, who is it? Who is it? What's going on? Magnum, is that you? Real I can Jack. barely see your signal. It's so garbled. It garbles on purpose. I'm trying to have a private conversation here. You guys want to meet up with them, or do you want to just meet it? Expl- probably the less we explain over the, the phone, the better. Yeah, we should definitely meet up. But yeah. that's, you're not talking to Wheeljack right now. You're talking to his, his tablet. Oh, damn it. Put Wheeljack <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> that was Wheeljack. <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> did I tell you the wrong voice? I, that, it felt like he, he felt way too spunky and kind of like, yeah, get out of my face, boy, you know. What do you guys no, do? Okay. Me? No, I mean, hey, you know, it's good. He's been hanging around with the, the tablet. I'm everything I know now. <laughs> Rex, Rex, is that you? All right, Will Jack, we need to meet up with you. Serious, serious bad developments. We need your brain. Hopefully the rest of you too. I was going to say, if uh, it's just my brain, then <laughs> I'm kind of using that. Oh, well, there's always a way. But you know what? Because I, cause I like you, you can use my brain and my hands. But they got to stay attached to me. Well, consider it. I'm going to go uh, check out his block and make sure it's not being watched. I will uh, transform into a car and zip-zoom away. Zip-zoom. We need to meet you on the down low. Better not to tell too much over the phone. Are you at your lab or, or is there somewhere better? Of course I'm at my lab. All Do right. we need to meet somewhere else? What do you guys think? What's the security system at his lab like? How secure is your lab? Is there anyone around that would see us? Carapace, you you recognize that he's not a a like a security expert kind of kind of bot. It's not like he's going to. He doesn't particularly care about that. He's more about right. the the science. Okay. I mean, there's locks on the door, sure, but you know, in the end, it it's not going to be very hard for someone to get into his his lab. Right. Okay. You know, like there are certain types of kind of super genius that are like oh yeah like i've got a contingency for everything and if he's not that guy then that's that's fine we just need to know that mm-hmm. he's more of a mad scientist right you know yeah like let's see if i can make this spark eater corpse walk around what <laughs> <laughs> exactly all right where can we meet that's uh convenient to you that you could casually meet us at casually that doesn't attract a lot of attention casually uh, go ahead and give me a culture check. I have a 17. Got a 13 plus 2. That's 15. Anybody else helping? Uh, not I. All right, I guess it's a 15 then. So you go ahead and pull up a uh, a map of the city, and it looks like there is uh, a manufacturing building that is about two blocks away. Uh, and you think that the the noise of the the plant is probably a good uh, uh, a good thing to help kind of block any um, audio sensors, and you know that the plant is a hundred percent automated, so you think that it should be uh, there shouldn't be anyone there. All right. 
Uh, let's uh, jump over to Sweet Spot for just a moment. Uh, go ahead and give me a perception check in addition to a stealth check. Alrighty. Well, uh, <clears throat> my stealth check for sneakily uh, taking a slow spin around this block is a 24. And my perception, damn it, this should be a lot easier with headlights, uh, is a 14. Uh, nothing looks suspicious around, and you think you have avoided anyone who is watching you. Okay, I will uh, con- contact Magnum and let him know. Uh, hey, uh, Magnum, the uh, the block looks clear. No one's watching. It doesn't look like there's any cameras on the place. Ten four, sounds good. Get back here. <clears throat> Zip, zip, zoo. So uh, I'll suggest to him that we'll meet at the factory then and uh, discuss things there if he's willing to. All right. Yeah, he is. He's willing to to come see you. And uh, don't don't bring anybody with you. Not even my uh, my data pad. Not even your data, especially not your data pad. What if I need to write something down? What if I need to take some notes? It's it's us. Y- y- you won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell him that. <laughs> You won't need to. We're not that smart. All right, then. It'll just be me. Imagine one of those little bug things on the data pad. It would be like 50% of his mass. (laughs) It would. That could be the reason for his bad attitude. (laughs) No, he's just a little punk. All right. So uh, we will, uh, I guess, go down street level and, like, uh, make our way casually, carefully to the uh, the factory. I'll go ahead and check it out. The right. zoom. See if you can uh, see any sort of cameras or security devices or anything like that that might normally be yep. there. I'll, I'll do the, the same kind of uh, uh, slow circle that I did at, uh, at Wheeljack's place when I get there. So, Sweet Spot, you do notice uh, a couple of cameras kind of, I just on the building. They look like normal surveillance cameras, uh, but you do map out a uh, a, a route that kind of gets through them. So no problem with that. And you go ahead and uh, transmit that route over to your companions, uh, and they follow that and get into the building with uh, no problems. Uh, it's a little bit loud in here. Not as loud as the the engineering room in the uh, OB bus uh, station, but you think that it's it's just loud enough where if someone were trying to listen in, you, they'd, they'd have a bit of a difficult time. Uh, you guys get there first, and you're there for a few minutes when uh, Wheeljack just comes sauntering in. Uh, it doesn't look like he was aware of the security cameras, so it looks like he just kind of walked right in. Um, you know... Genius, but oblivious sometimes, right? Yep. Couldn't pull off the plot without it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Wheeljack gets there. Hey, everyone, what's going on here? What's uh, what do you need my help for? Why so secretive? Hey, I remember you. You're a wild strike, right? Yeah. You don't watch a lot of TV, do you? Oh, the news? Bah, no, don't care for it. I mean, really, who walks into a clandestine meeting through the front door? I looked behind me to be sure no one was following me. Yeah, but did you see if anyone was watching you? Did you notice the cameras? You see, you pause, you pause there. That's a no. When you, when you pause, that's a no. <laughs> you know what? Carapace, I think I'm going to go uh, go stand watch at the door. No, I'm going to. You can talk. Oh, okay. I'm okay with that, too. Damn, your impulses are still with me. <laughs> and you can probably make it quieter by all getting inside of a bigger uh, magnum. Do I have enough room to go full size in here? Oh yeah, yeah, certainly. Ooh, your full size is not is nine spaces. Yeah. Then yeah, yeah, you have plenty of room. All right, so I'll transform into a. Uh, uh, I'll just sensor bay, so keep an eye out around, <laughs> keep my ears open, and uh, do an energon scan around in case anything approaches. So, and then you guys can go and have a seat, and chat. You know, uh, I have to pause the uh, the game for a second. Just, I have to say, this is the most intimate group of role players 
I've ever been involved with. I think due to the fact that we're in and out of each other so often. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was having similar thoughts, like you know, just like the casual inside outside the, togetherness, the casual nature yeah, of yeah. interchangeability is just so yeah. so nonchalantly <laughs> weird. You guys can play like rock paper scissors to see who we sleep in tonight. You know? <laughs> That's what happens when you play Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> So we have either just gained or lost a lot of fans. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like we're swingers, right? I mean, nope. Some of it, some of us are rollers. Some of us are, are flyers. <laughs> not the way wild, Not the way uh, Magnum looks. <laughs> I'd say sink or swim, but I know most of us are gonna sink. All right. Uh, is Barricade, Legionnaire, Arctic, and the Guard in there with you, or are they waiting outside? Uh, might as well keep them inside. I mean, keep an eye on them. And lock the doors, and then we can show them uh, the little bu- show wheeljack little bugs and uh, give him a rundown. I mean, we really need him. The biggest thing we need him is to be able to detect and disrupt these things. But also, we want him to be aware of the situation. I was gonna say first, you gotta make him believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, he's got a scientific mind. He, he shouldn't really be all that uh, uh, disbelieving. I'll just stick it to the back, stick it to Sweet Spot's back or the back of his neck or something like that. See, what? Nope. No, we have <laughs> some that already has a hole in their neck, right? Didn't it come out of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the guard? Uh, endanger an NPC, please. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we also probably shouldn't reconnect it because they might be able to get live awareness of it. I thought all the ones that we had were dead anyway. Yeah, we toasted them. That's a good question. Did you, you didn't actually save any, did you? Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, we, we, did. Brought, we brought some dead ones. That was that was for sure. I don't think we got any alive, though. I don't think it was possible. I mean, it depends on how damaged they were when I, when we disconnected them. I mean, we did get one off this dude, right? That we have with us, so it might be more or less functional. I'm not sure. Yeah, he was he was broken. unconscious, not dead. Yeah. So I mean, Pythagoras can fill. I mean, Pythagoras did a, some analysis already of it, so because that's why we know sort of what they do to a degree. So, I mean, he can give Wheeljack all the information he has so far on them. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Wheeljack will, will go ahead and take a look at the, the, uh, the, the bugs that you have, uh, the devices, and he will examine the, uh, the back of the, the guard within just a, a couple of seconds of kind of seeing the device and the, the result on, on the guard. He'll come out and tell you. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is bombshell's work. That's not a question. He's uh, he's definitely the the one who would have he would have created this. Not bombshell, I mean, isn't that, is that one of the insecticons? Yes, it is. <sighs> Why do you say that? You just you just recognize it from the past. Oh yeah, we saw stuff like this during the during the war. Uh, bombshell is one of the the few scientists who actually knew how to how to make something like this and specialized in. Uh, uh, in mnemonic control. So, yeah, this is definitely one of his. So do we know where he is now or where we thought he was? Make a culture check. Uh, he's He's been turned into the Armada. Yeah, I'll, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I got a 21 to uh, aid you, Magnum. So that means I got or, or a... 31. All right, so Magnum, you have read that Bombshell was supposedly killed... Uh, back when, uh, back when everyone was fighting the uh, the Devoid, uh, like like a few years back, uh, he hasn't been seen since. However, his technology is, uh, while not readily available, uh, has been studied. So it could potentially be someone continuing on his work. So you're saying it's not proprietary, right? Do we? What is? What was the name of the the, the Devoid? Yes, uh, and Magnum, you would. I imagine you would know this. Uh, back uh, back before Cybertron was restored, uh, there was this kind of giant creature that uh, uh, that pretty much had had forced a, a merger between a, a lot of like the uh, the the scourges, like the sweeps in the the universe, uh, and it turned it into some like giant just alien creature that uh, uh, Megatron and the Autobots had to, uh, to fight, and they eventually won. Uh, while I'm listening to Magnum uh, repeat this information to us, 
I am getting an idea that uh, the guy that sent us in there to get the, uh, the Matrix of uh, Combination. Uh, the Enigma of Combination? Yeah, that thing too. Probably, probably wants it for his boss uh, to do something like that again. Does that sound like something that's possible, likely, and god damn it, uh, fearful? That's actually really interesting. Terrifying concept there. Yeah. Well, sure, but the Enigma is locked up in the in the vaults. About that. Hypothetically, we should definitely ask him what he knows about the Enigma before we drop it in his lap, because <laughs> you know, just sort of hide it behind our backs right now. Yeah. Do you know how to change who's in an Enigma combination? Like, you know, is there a? <laughs> It'd have oh, to be boy. yay big and. You know, sort of spiky and, you know, bring, brings people together in a whole new way. Well, I would, uh, if, well, this is all theoretical, of course, but if I wanted to, one would, uh, all one would have to do is, uh, level up and take the feat for it, which is what you guys have done now that you have dealt with the Enigma of Combination. Welcome, everyone, to level five. Huzzah! Awesome. <laughs> nice. Oh, wow. To be continued next time. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah. Dun, 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 this is actually dun, a good dun, place dun, dun, dun. This is Blaster, blasting out to the airwaves, bringing you the latest and greatest hits and news updates. I have big news for you today, so keep those audio receptors turned up to the max. Empire of Rust was created, written, and GM'd by Michael Ordway. Carapace is played by Patrick Finn. Wild Strike, the Decepticon, is played by Mike M. Pythagoras and Magnum are played by Matthew G. Sweet Spot is played by Adam I. Chu. And last but no way least, Rex and his dino buds, Laser, Grazer, and Laser, are played by Rob Muller. Keep the hits coming by supporting the show at transmissionspodcast.com slash rust. And tune in to the Transmissions Network for all your Transformers news and reviews. This is Blaster, the voice of Cybertron's airwaves, blasting out.